In Mongolia, milking the yaks is women's work, and it's one of the first jobs they do in the morning. Yaks are Mongolia's cattle, and they set the pace for rural life. I've gotten used to getting up so early. In the summer, I wake up around 5. First, I take care of the yogurt, and then I see to the yaks. The nomads of Zafkan province in western Mongolia live off animal husbandry. From here, it's almost 200 kilometers to the nearest city. But these people aren't entirely cut off from technological progress. At the moment, it's not working so well because it's cloudy. But the solar cells are incredibly important and useful for us. When the weather is better, we turn them toward the sun. By evening, my battery is fully charged, and it works wonderfully. Solar facilities like these have become standard equipment in Mongolian yurts. Electricity from a sustainable source, clean and environmentally sound. Our hosts prepare butter tea, Mongolia's national beverage. The ingredients are tea, water, salt, butter and yak milk. The mixture is heated on a wood-burning stove, because the battery charged with solar energy is only powerful enough to operate small devices. It's much easier this way. I used to need shaving cream and razor blades. Now I just plug my electric razor into the battery. It's much more convenient. Mongolia covers an area of one and a half million square kilometers, making it one of the largest countries in Asia. It's very sparsely populated. From here, for example, it would take three days to reach the capital on a motorcycle. It doesn't make much sense to string power masts across the whole country when dealing with distances like these. Uliastai, the provincial capital, has 16,000 residents and is one of Mongolia's larger cities. Here, too, electricity is partially generated from renewable sources. But some is produced just as it was decades ago. The old power plant uses diesel generators, which is the case in many Mongolian cities. The diesel fuel is imported from Russia and subsidized by the Mongolian government. It would be impossible to produce electricity otherwise. The big Russian generators consume 180 liters of diesel an hour when they operate at full capacity. The smaller American and Polish generators consume between 70 and 80 liters, and as you can imagine, that adds up to an awful lot. Our next destination is up north, and it'll take us four hours to get there in an off-road vehicle. The Mongolian summer is short, and in the long winter, temperatures can fall to as low as 30 degrees Celsius, below zero. Tosonsengel is a typical small Mongolian city. There's a small diesel power plant here, too, but it's no longer used during the day in the summer. Instead, hydroelectric power is being generated here. The project is a German-Mongolian joint effort. The German partner is the GTZ, the German Society for Technical Cooperation. Holger Ludwig, a hydraulic engineer from Germany, has lived in Mongolia for more than eight years. He helped train the staff at the power plant. 
the technology had to be adapted to the country's climate conditions. We are able to fully exploit small amounts of water. Especially in winter, when the river freezes over, we still have a little water flowing under the ice. And we can make good use of the water with this turbine construction. And that way we're able to produce electricity all the way into December, when other power plants have long since suspended operations. These days, Holger Ludwig only stops by when a problem arises. The project has finally been completed. In the fall, he'll be returning to Germany for good. Of course, it's a great feeling. You can't help but feel proud, especially when the people in the village tell you that they now have more power, that they can use the electricity. And what makes me especially proud is that the people who operate the power plant here on site maintain and operate it well. That gives us hope that they will be able to produce electricity here for many years. The GTZ has helped build three such power plants. Now it hopes Mongolia can build more of them on its own. Then other cities would also have environmentally friendly power. Electricity from renewable sources. It already functions for Mongolian nomads, at least on a small scale.